Okay, Boker Tover, everybody. Nice to see everybody. Uh, class. Uh, Good morning. Four on our Good ongoing morning. series on this on the sitter. Yeah. Okay. Um. All right. So we're going to continue pick up on Ashray or talk on Ashray. I just want to, uh, which is of course the highlight, really, uh, of. Psukhet is Zimmer, one of the highlights of prayer. We spoke last week how the Gemara says, if you ashray your ticket to Olam Haba, whatever that means exactly. And obviously it's the uh, it's the major theme. We'll pick up on that. We'll get into hopefully some of ashray itself. I just want to say a couple of things that came up. I, you know, it's it's amazing. We'll see uh, hopefully in a, in a few minutes. You know, I've mentioned before the uh, comment of the Abu Draham and many others that our prayer book is basically based on um, on the Chumash or on Tanakh. In other words, the phraseology, uh, you look through with Shimon Esrei, much of the phraseology of our davening um, is through the Tanakh. And uh, as Rav Soloveitchik explained, because uh, we don't really have the authority to pray. It's a, a chutzpah. So we've mentioned many times the beautiful notion of the Ramban, that prayer is not an obligation. Prayer is an act of kindness of God, that God allows us to ask him for wealth and health and wisdom and peace, etc. That's like a, a tremendous, uh, we have an audience with God uh, every, every day, three times a day. So that's an amazing act of chesed. So much of our, our siddur is based on Tanakh. So we mentioned last week that the, the pasuk, Ash, the second pasuk of Ashrei, it's not really Ashrei, or I guess it is Ashrei, it's not Tilal David, Ashram Shachach Aloh, Ashram Shachach Aloh, so that came from, comes from the same Mizmor, in other words, what Ashram Shachach Aloh, blessed is the nation that this, it has this. So this, we said, in the context of Tanakh, means what's in that Mizmor, and uh, that Perikim Thielen, which talks about peace and stability and economic prosperity and all good things. So blessed is the nation. Like uh, this, you know, when God gives us like blessings, by Ekev Tishmun, if we listen to the mitzvot, we get blessing. So I just mentioned that that Mizmor has the first verse in the prayer for the government. So I'm just going to show you something. And I I didn't notice it, of course, till after the class. And then I, uh, I, I maybe you'll have a better answer than I. So I want people to tell me what the problem is in Tfilah L'Shom HaMedina once we take a look at this verse. So let's just take a look here. Why is this happening? Okay, cancel. Okay, so let's go. Here we go. Hanoten shu'alu malachim hapotzeh David avdo mecher ra'ah. So this is how the tefillah for the government begins. So what's the problem? I, I know you yeah, have to... Ha I'm sorry? Doesn't our version say hamotza? With a man? Hamotza. Hapotza. Hapotza David avdo. Oh, he okay. rescues David, his servant. So what is that? What what's the problem? You have to really look in the Tfilah L'Shlom HaMedina to re realize it. That's not exactly what Tfilah L'Shlom HaMedina says, right? I'm going to read you out now from the what's printed. I think in most of the Sidurim, Hanotein Shualim Alachim. That's the same, okay? Umem Shalal and Nesichi Machuto Machu Kolomim Hapotzeh David Abdo Mecher of Ra'ah. In other words, the whoever composed Tfilah L'Shlom HaMedina inserted. In the middle of the verse, after the words "Hanotein Shualim Lachim," inserted "Umem Shalal and Nesichim," sovereignty to the rulers, "Machuto Machu Kol Olamim," the kingdom of God is for all people. Apot said to "You can't do that. You're not allowed to take a verse and divide it. We have a problem. You're you're not. I mean, uh, you're not allowed to divide verses in the Torah into two. So, for example." Um, so that's not a whole pasuk. I, what do we do there? We often add things, or people say at the beginning of, of Kiddush, they'll add the before Yom HaShishu, because you're not allowed to say hap sukim, you're for sure not allowed to divide sukim and hap. So this kind of bothered me, and I was wondering why in the world this happened. So I, uh, I floated the question on a rabbinic listserv, that I'm on, and uh, whatever the discussion was, kind of fascinating, and I was kind of a little taken aback because uh, a couple people said, "I, I find this I, whatever." Um, I didn't, I haven't followed up 100 percent that Hanotein Shul Malachim is that they put it a subversive prayer. It, it's not really a prayer for the government. It was like we we know that the the Jews prayed for the Tsar in Russia, and basically a whole thing that uh, it's really. Um, we're praying that God should um, 
save the Jewish people, but whatever that may be, in other words, different, uh, and then different people said, no, they don't say this version, because the halacha is very clear in Perkei Avot. It's not, in other words, the, the issue here, and I haven't really noticed it before, of course, I, or maybe I noticed it, but I didn't pay attention. Maybe that's the same thing. Um, that what do we do in Tefillah L'Shom Medina? We're praying that the government should be nice to the Jewish people. Um, let, let God should give in their hearts and in their advisors that they should do good with us. Not just us in this country, but with Jews around the world. Be mayhem, be a in all times. The people of Judah should be saved. The Israelis on the bet that the Jewish people shall dwell in tranquility. So it's all very nice. It's very nice. We want the government to be nice to us. But that's not a uh, fulfillment of the halacha. The halacha is having me palel bishlomo shamachut, pray for the welfare of the government. She'il malay, uh, what's the word? If not for the stability of the government, life will be anarchy. Look at the countries in the world that have no government. Lebanon and uh, look at all these countries you know Afghanistan it's 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 the it's worse than the wild west it's awful so we have to pray even for the czar there there was a certain uh, I guess sense of uh of, of stability so the idea of the prayer for the government is not to pray the government should be nice to Jews I mean y- yeah that's included we want political stability for everybody and somehow this Tvila, so a couple of people wrote to me in their shuls, they don't actually say Hanotein Shua. They, they don't think it's a fulfillment of that. And they gave me other versions of Tvila L'Shom Abedina. We know that Avinu Sheba Shemaim Tzur Yisrael V'Golo Berech Medinat Yisrael Reshit Shemika Kulatenu. The blessings we stay for the state of Israel, we also know that uh, has a, I don't know, a long history. I mean, the, the state of Israel is only 75 years old, but uh, not quite, almost. Um and uh, there's a whole debate. Did uh, Rav Herzog compose it? Did um, Shai Agnon oppose it? Did Rav Herzog ask Shai Agnon to oppose it? And there were people, it, it's, a, it's a very unusual prayer. Avinu Sheba Shemaim. That's not, we don't, we bring Yehirat Zoma Fanecha. It's not sort of the standard um, um, formula of a prayer. And there are different formulas. Of course, the big debate is, should we say Rishit Smichakulotenu? So all I'm pointing out is that the, um, the Tfilot we say for the government are not so simple, and it's a it's a complicated the, the process. And I just when I saw the pasuk, and then I noticed uh, the the tefillah l'shemina basically breaks the pasuk into, and I don't. No one has given me an exact halachic justification for how they can do such a thing. I mean, these things happen. How do you say by here by Boker before kiddush? We we do these things, <laughs> but it's a little bit um, I don't know, a little bit halachic problematic. So sorry, just wanted to point that out. Okay, let let's get back to Ashrei. Um, so uh, what, let's get let's get to the importance of Ashray. And uh, oh, before I start, I'm sorry, I already started. I want to thank our sponsors of today's Shear, uh, Stephen and and Karen Gellis, um, who are sponsoring this year in uh, honor and memory of their parents and their grandparents. I really think uh, what uh, what happened is last week. Um, when uh, when Stephen saw that I was giving a talk on Ashray, so he sent me an article about Ashray by by Ruben Kimmelman. He said this article changed his life and how he understands Ashray, and he, he may want to use it. So I told him I had just discovered the article that week and I was planning to use it. But Baruch Shekivanta, that we both uh, thought the, the same thing. So I want to I want to thank him for the article and uh, I want to thank him for their ongoing ongoing support of, of Tor Motion and uh, they should have good memories and long life. We should all have. Happy occasions to to join together. So, um, but before we get to Reuven Kim, Kimmelman's analysis of Ashray, I just point out something kind of interesting. Um, I don't know why a um, number of commentaries point this out. This is actually very interesting. Why is Tehillim called Tehillim? Well, what should it be called? Tehillim? Um, so what, what other name could you have for the book of Tehillim? You call it Ashray. Ashray Ish. Uh, it's very interesting. I didn't even think of it until right now. Tehillim starts with Ashrei, right? You see Ashrei, right? That's how Tehillim opens up. You could call that. I don't know. You could call it Brachot, Tehillot. I don't know. And so what? Where are you going? Marim. I'm sorry? Ms. Marim. Right. Ms. Marim would be better. I agree that a better would be more precise because how often does the expression Tehillah um, appear? We, you know, the, you, I, I don't know if people really realize that. Um, David and Melech did not compose all of, of Tehillim. 
The Gemara mm-hmm. says, I think, up to 10 people. We know, Lam Natsayat Livnei Korach Mizmor. We discussed that. Mizmor Livnei La Saf. We have a lot of Mizmorim. The Midrash claims that Mizmor Shir Liyom HaShabbat was composed by Adam HaRishon. I don't know what that means exactly, but um, but clearly because but the ones that have names, they have names attached to them. So obviously those were composed not by David HaMelech. And, and some of the Mizmorim, I mean, that uh, problem people. So what do you mean, Alna Rot Bavel? Uh, the, the Jewish people in exile are, are weeping. What do you mean, the exile? They, we haven't even built the Beit Hamikdash yet. We're, we're talking about exile. So that that's a, that's not for now. When we study Tehillim, but just to be aware of it, it's not uh, David Amelech was the main composer, and he was the he was the this the singer of the of the Jewish people. But Tehillim is composed of many many uh, people. Uh, their Tehillim, but. Um, so, but so how so we have Mizmor Le David. We have a lot of Mizmor Le David. We have a lot that don't have any introductions. The hallelujahs that we're going to say now. They don't have a who said them, but the number of them have who said them. So, how often does the expression to so have Mizmor Le David, Mizmor La Saf, Mizmor Le Korach, Mizmor? How often do we have the expression Tila Le David? Once. I'm sorry. Once. Once. There you go. That's it. Tila Le David. This is the only time in Sefer Tehillim. That a mizmor starts with Tehillah le David, a, a praise. It's very interesting. A mizmor. I don't exactly know the difference between a mizmor. I mean, a mizmor is a song. A Tehillah is a, a, a praise. A, a, a song is not necessarily a, a praise. So, but Tehillah le David. And, and many of the commentators actually point out because the centrality of Ashrei that uh, we say uh, it's so important, Potech et Yedecha, because of the centrality of Ashrei, the entire book got its name from Tehillah David, from Tehillim. And that's why the book is called um, Tehillim. Okay, very, very interesting. Uh, the, you know, why is it? Because uh, we you don't have that expression. You have ha- hallelujah, it's, it's a related expression. But anyway, so that's, uh, we call Sefer Tehillim, and Tehillah David is the only time that expression appears in Sefer Tehillim. Um, one other thing just about Ashrei. Last week, we focused on the additions to Ashrei, the first two Verses Ashri Ashri Vetech and Ashri Ashri Vetech. And the last verse, Banachtan Varachia, that comes from Halo, right? The additions and the end, and of course, the Mizmor itself. So that, that was our discussion mainly last week. But um, I saw this week that um, the um, one of the commentators, the H. Joseph, in, I think it was the H. Joseph, in the Siddur Otsar Hatfilot, says that um, Ashri Yoshri Vetech was said by the people when they were Ola Regal. When they came on Ali Ala Regal three times a year, or whenever they came, um, they would say how great Ash Beitecha, Ki Beiti Beitila. We discussed last week. The house of God is the Beit Hamikdash. That's what it means. And the house of God is a place, a prayer. Beiti Beitila. So Ashrei Yoshrei Beitecha. When people came on Ali Ala Regel, they would say the verse Ashrei Yoshrei Beitecha, and then they would say they would, in a sense, be be jealous of the Kohanim. They only come to the Beit Hamikdash you know, three times a year. We, uh, the Kohanim and the Levim, they can come, although they also really went, didn't go so often. They went more on rotation, but conceptually, the Kohanim and the Levim were the people always in the Beit HaMikdash. And of course, uh, we know that the uh, in our world of thought, being in the presence of God is supposed to bring you joy. That's the whole notion, that uh, feeling the presence of God, Usmach Dem Lipnei Hashem, uh, when we're in the presence of God, i.e. in the Beit HaMikdash, that's why we take the Lula for seven days at the temple. Smachtem Lipnei Hashem, be happy before God, i.e. In the, in the temple. It's the presence of God that makes us happy. Lipnei Hashem Titaru, purify yourself before God. That's for Yom Kippur. And, um, and because we're in the presence of God, we're purifying before God. So therefore, Yom Kippur is the happiest day of the year, as the mission says. Okay. Um, Another interesting idea, so we discussed last week, whoever says uh, Ashrei three times a day is promised Olam Haba. So uh, that's where we discuss what does that mean? How does that work? And uh, doesn't, it doesn't mean you just mumble a few words and get Olam Haba. But um, the Slota Davram Siddur basically says that this is a case of rabbinic hyperbola. That's not the exact words he uses. I, I know he's writing uh, 150 years ago. Uh, there, this is rabbinic hyperbola. Um, and we have a lot of this to to is to stress the importance. Um, how do I know it's rabbinic hyperbola? So I'll show you one other source. Uh, it's on on the same page. As a matter of fact, this may be the reason that uh, <coughs> this expression is said here. Where do we go? So here we have. Uh, here we have. Mm-hmm. Um, we're not discussing yet the nuns and ashray. Why nun is missing? 
here. Whoever says Tilala uh, David three times gets Olam Haba. So if you go up, uh, okay, in the real in the Gemara, you go up up twenty lines or so. So it says like this. I hope I uh, hope I didn't miss it. Here. Who gets Olam Haba? Whoever is, um, says in Mariv. We know the bracha of Ga'al Yisrael. And then at Shachrit, you have to say Shmon Esri immediately. Many of the Chazanim have a custom. They don't even say the bracha Ga'al Yisrael out loud because yes. uh, it's a question whether you're allowed to answer Amen to that bracha because you have to mamash exactly be so you have to say immediately after geula tfila that redemption leads to prayer redemption leads to coming to god and to praising him ah, immediately so the Gemara says you have to do that at, at night too so the Gemara said we don't really do that at night because uh, we say hashkivenu and then we say a half kaddish so the Gemara was actually troubled by that how do we do that so they say no that's also gula it obviously means the gula at night is a little bit different than the one at the day we do allow "Quote unquote," even though it's not a, it's an interruption. It's related, but it's still an in interruption. And probably, why did the Gemara say these things? Because Gemara wants to impress upon us the importance of um, of um, of something. So they'll say, "You'd say you get olam haba." Now, why do they have to impress the importance? Because often, because people aren't aren't doing it right. What what do, what do rabbis speak about? They speak about the things that people are not doing correctly. So to put gula at night, I thought that uh, to me it just means we redemption is a day. <coughs> Re redemption is a day. Mari and um, night is fear. Yaakov Avinu is running away. That's why he davens Marv. Avram Avinu sees the beauty of the sunrise. That's why he prays in the morning. Day is hope. Night is fear. So uh, Geula, redemption, is very is a very um, daytime idea. So Gemara says, no, it can also be at night. It can also have Geula at night. So Kolo Sumer, Geula at night. Get Solam Haba. Perhaps that's a mean. You have another expression that we say, um, I think, the Nusach Svar, they say every day, no? And then in Nusach Ashkenaz, we just say once a week. And that's where else do we say you get Olam Haba for, for doing something? Also relatively easy. These are all simple things to do. So obviously there's much more. So say Gal Yisrael and say Shmon Esri. Say Ashrei and get to Olam Haba. And what, and what is the third one? Or, or another one that uh, you, you, you say something and you get to Olam Haba. Um, Tanya Ve'eliyahu, Kol HaShoneh HaLachot B'chol Yom. Whoever learns Jewish law every day, Muftachlo, he's promised, Shehu ben Olam Abba. Shenemar halichot olam lo, al tikra halichot ala halachot. The play on words. So if you just learn halacha, that's why a lot of rabbis, a lot of shuls, they'll say a one minute var halacha. Right? They have it in your shuls, a one minute var halacha after davening. And then they'll say, um, a kaddish, why halacha? Because whoever learns halacha every day is muftach lo So again, it obviously means more than, it means he, he, he practices the halacha, but, but that's this idea. So again, these are, I would say, examples of rabbinic hyperbola. On this comment, and that's really why I, I brought in. So um, Dr. Norman Lamb has such a beautiful insight uh, on this idea. What follows and the, what we say, if you learn halacha every day, you're promised Allah. What's, what, what should come next? What should, be, what, what should our, our sitter do next? So what teach we do a halacha. Is, teach a halacha. Should teach a halacha, right? What does the sitter do? It's not what it does. Torah scholars increase peace in the world. So I don't want to be cynical, I guess I am, and say this. So how do you know the rabbis had a sense of humor? Because they say, Okay, that's not nice. Uh, but uh, it's not nice. Doesn't mean it's not true. Um, and then uh, so one of my friends said, they In other words, if, if it's obvious, you don't have to quote um, a verse. So Talmud, Torah scholars increase peace in the world, as it said. What do you mean as it says? So uh, um, anyway, so Dr. Lamb, really, it's a, it's a beautiful idea. So he says, why, why do we teach this sort of anakata? It's a nice idea. Yeah, Torah scholars, and you know, why, why do we teach, an, why don't we teach a halacha? So the answer, I mean, that maybe I didn't phrase the question right. The answer, Dr. Lamb says, is we are teaching a halacha. 
the halach is that Torah scholars must increase peace in the world. That's a halach. It's not a statement that this is what they do. It's an halachic imperative. It's such a beautiful, simple, but beautiful idea. Um, whoever learns halacha every day is guaranteed the world come. What halacha do you have to then, what halacha do you have to learn do? You have to bring mm-hmm. peace to the world. That, that's halacha you have to do. Everything ends with peace. The only vessel God can find for, for blessings is peace. So this is a halacha. It's not an agadic statement. I just thought that was such a, a beautiful idea. I wanted to share that with you. Okay. And then I'll give one more example and then we'll get to Ashra. Then we'll do Dr. Doc, 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 Kimmelman's piece. Um, and that is, we have the same idea, what we would call rabbinic hyperbola, if we can. Um, in other words, we know we, we, we don't take rabbinic statements literally. We take them seriously, very seriously. There's something special about that. We don't take him literally. That just if you say Ashrei three times a day, I'll get, you're going to get to Olam Haba. So where else do we have such an idea of rabbinic hyperbola? That if something is so important, it's X, Y, and Z. So maybe I'll tell you what it is, and then you give me the examples. Something is as important as every other mitzvah in the Torah. This mitzvah is so important, it's shakul, keneget, kol Torah, kul. It's, it, all the mitzvah in the Torah equal. What mitzvah is that? Tamut Torah. Tamut Torah, Kineke Kulam. Good. Where? Keep going. Sitzit. Wearing Sitzit. Keep, Keep going. Sitzit, you know, Rashi, that's why the Gematria is, is 600 and the eight strings of the Sukkot and the five, uh, the Sitzit and the five knots, 613, right? Sitzit is Shakul, Tineke. You look up to the sky, right? It's equal to mitzvah. Keep going. We're in- Kavod Habriyo. So I'm not aware of that. I, I I'm not saying it's not important. The, I kavod up is more important than 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 tzitzis. Respecting other people is for sure more important than tzitzis. Tzitzis is not even an obligation. That's what's so crazy about it. Tzitz, you know, there's no obligation towards tzitzis. If you wear a four corner garment, you must. Tzitzis. I must hear shofar. I got to go out of my way. I must hear the megillah. I must make Yiddish. I'm afraid. I don't wear tzitzis. I wear four. That's why. People who aren't married, the minag in, in Ashkenazic circles is that single men don't wear tzitzis to uh, sort of embarrass them to get married. That's really the origin that people should know. I, I told you once, Rav, Rav Schechter told us that when he was in YU, so he went to, I don't I, he told me who it was, but whatever, it's, it's, a, it's a well-known person. They went to Devon and Breuer's once, they were in YU. And Breuer's, the minag in the German world, that they, even single people wear talis. So they walked into shul and they were both single and they handed Rav Schechter a talis and they handed his friend a talis. And Rav Schechter put it on. <laughs> you know, they asked him the shul for Seder. And the friend said, I, my minag is not to wear uh, a talis. So they said, well, I'm sorry, the minag in our shul is everybody wears a talis. He said, no, I don't wear a talis. They said, but if you don't wear a talis, you'll, you'll stand out. Everybody will notice you. He says, that's exactly what I want. So, uh, you know, he wants people to know he's single to, to set him up. That was probably the origin. But how, you can't say, I'm not going to wear tefillin until I get married. Well, what kind of ridiculous idea is that? So you don't have to wear tzitzit. If you wear a four-corner garment, then you have to put on tzitzit. You don't have to wear a four-corner garment. So we love mitzvahs, so we wear four-corner garment. By the way, as another total aside, we have lots of asides, the, the Rama says that's the reason women don't wear tzitzis. There's no, uh, nothing uh, fancy schmancy here. Why, why is it women here shofar, women here lula, women sit in sukkah? They don't have to. Those are the classic mitzvot of say shazman I know that, that bothers some women. What do you mean they don't have to wear shofar? But that's a classic example of mitzvot of say shazman grama. Women don't have to, of course, they get a mitzvah, they do and make a brach, it's wonderful, but they don't have to do it. They're very nice, they're doing it of their own. Career. So why is it that women don't wear tzitzis? Well, I, I mean, some do, but it's not so common. It's very uncommon. Um, but uh, there was nothing wrong. It says, no, the men don't have to wear tzitzis. So uh, what's the big deal? So, okay, men go out of the way. For the women, they don't have to go so out of their way. No, if they want to, akashag isn't the hate. And uh, okay, I'm not getting into all the politics that would insert. But from a halakhic point of view, that's how the Ramah, but filling is different. Tefillin, uh, tefillin, the rabbis would prefer men don't wear tefillin. Because uh, tefillin, you have to have, you have to have pure thoughts, thinking about Torah the whole time. And uh, nobody can, can do that. If you want to mute yourself, please, or I'll go mute you. Um, nobody, we, it's very hard to do that. So the rabbi said, okay, limit limit tefillin to half an hour a day when you dub. And hopefully between dubbing and tefillin, you'll focus. But really, the rabbis didn't like men wearing tefillin. So that's why we it's generally discouraged 
for a woman to wear tefillin. No, I don't think it's the biggest aver in the world. Halavai, the woman like that, that's not you know. But uh, the the reason that Jewish tradition uh, nor how, how traditionally observant women have not worn tefillin is because really the halacha doesn't want men to wear tefillin. But what can we do? The Torah obligates. So okay, so we put on tefillin for a few minutes. But this is is totally different. Okay, so so this is a shakul kenega kol mitzvah. What else? Anybody from Shabbat. Israel here on online today? Shabbat. 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 Uh, that's another one. Shabbat, of course, is connected kol hamitzvot, right? Living in Israel, right? Shkula, dirat eretz Israel, the, the the importance of living in Israel, like all hamitzvot. So you know, everybody. So you know, you go to a Zionist yeshiva, they they, they talk about that a lot. They don't put it in context, right? That's uh, that's uh, unfortunate, you know? Yes, there is a rabbinic statement that living in Israel is equivalent to Talmud Tzvot. There's also one that Sitzis is and Talmud Torah is. We say the Talmud Torah one every day. Avodah Zara is. So, well, Brit Milah, Brit Milah, Shakul Kanega Kol Mitzvot. Staka, Staka Shakul Kanega Mitzvot. That that one, I understand. The Ramba, that's, uh, the, the, the Torah tells us God chose Avraham because he's going to do tzedakah um, mishpat, teach his children. But, so you have like 10 different mitzvot. So they obviously can't all be true. Because, you know, what I mean, if you have Torah, if you have like stuck on this side and Mila on that side and 10, 20, 400 other mitzvot. So obviously this, this is rabbinic hyperbola. The, the, every particular rabbi, we know, a different rabbi stress different things. What's the most important thing? So different, uh, when they ask you, when they say the six questions, we're going to ask that 120, we get to heaven. So the first one is where you're honest in business. So the, that teaching was very much wanted to stress the importance of being honest in business. Yet other gemaras that stress the importance of learning Torah. Each are important. Each speaks to their generation. Each person is different. Everybody has to work on something. So the rabbis want to say, the rab I, I think the rabbis assume we would understand. They didn't mean it literally. They meant to stress the importance of, uh, you know, tzitz, you don't have to wear tzitzit. That's true. But come on, it's so beautiful. You wrap yourself up and you think of God and you put on the blue trailer and you, you don't have to do it. But it's so it's 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 more important than things you have to do. That's not a that's just a way of a speech. So we have a lot of that. So perhaps you have this idea in Ashri. Okay, um, that's just another um idea. What the Slotavram then does go this he's, first he says it's rabbinic hyperbola, and then he says nubo, but if you want to explain it like you know. Kipshutan, like it's plain meaning. The pshat doesn't mean literal. Mashmaut, right? Right. When Rashi says pshuto kemashmao, right? You have the Rashi. So that mashma, the mashmaut is the literal meaning. The pshat is not the literal meaning. Whatever pshat is, the plain meaning, the simple meaning, the contextual meaning, very hard to define pshat. But pshat doesn't mean the literal meaning. It um, that's mashmaut. So sometimes Rashi tells us the literal meaning is the pshat meaning, but often it isn't. So anyway, but the um, so uh, the Stoto of Ram says if you want to explain that um, the kipshuto that um, you know that whoever says ashray three times a day gets olam haba. Um, so what he says that if uh, we have other mitzvot, whoever talk, whoever embarrasses somebody in public, they lose their shirt in olam haba. So what happens? What happens if you say ashray and you, you embarrass somebody? Obviously, embarrassing somebody is worse than. You know, uh, you have to focus on that more. But what he's saying is there, there are certain things, uh, or the Rambam says, "Haporish somebody who's not involved in the Jewish community loses his share in the world to come. The Rambam in Hilchot Shuvah writes that he can be the biggest tzaddik in the world, but if he's alone, he doesn't get involved in the community, he loses his share in the world to come. So he says that it, it could be when you have a whole bunch, you've done some things, you lose all of So Ashrei can sort of help, you know, to mitigate that. How she can help... Uh, you know, to normally you have to do chuvan what you sin, bitter Ashra can help. Okay, no. All right. Let's um let me discuss. Um, what I'd like to do is now go over what um Dr. Ruben Kimmelman, the article that Steve Gellis had sent me that I we both had discovered, I guess, on our own, whatever. Um uh, okay, so Ru Ruben Kimmelman is a professor of Brandeis. I just saw it this morning. I didn't know. I see the Litvin Library is publishing their public their publication date is scheduled for January first, twenty twenty three. A book of his on on the sitter. He's a professor of Brandeis. He got the rabbinic ordination at at the uh, at the Jewish Theological Seminary, but he has some tremendous insights on the Dominic. So he has a, a short article. I can send it afterwards if people are interested. A short article on Ashrei. 
and he divides Ashrei into four parts. So before we go to, uh, you know, we go to the highlights roll and the screen, anybody want to guess? There are different ways to divide Ashrei. What are the four major themes of Ashrei? Just off the top of your head, what do you think? I scared everybody. Praise. I'm sorry, praise. praise. Yeah, so what, what type of praise? Okay, so... He says like this, well, maybe I'll, let's share our screen a little bit and we'll take it from there. Okay, everybody see it? So we, we pointed out last week, the call, call. So it only appears in the first 10 verses, uh, only three times. I mean, that's a lot, but still, Three times in the first 10 verses, nine, and then it's like in every verse, call, call, and I call, I point this last week, call, 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 everything, everything praises God, the, the completeness, that's right, God is everything, so that, but that, okay, so he says like this, you'll note I basically color-coded him, so the first thing he points out is Ashray is a um, expanding notion of praising God, so three times the word avarcha. We, I will bless you, come. So, Tehillah David, Arim Chayim Alech, Barach Hashim Chalolam, Ba'ed, who's, David HaMelech is talking. David HaMelech is talking, I, the singular, me, I'm going to bless you forever, right? And Pasuk Yud, Yodu Hashem Ko Masecha, um, we will um, acknowledge and praise all your action, V'chasidecha, Yibarachucha, not only me, but all the pious people will bless you. And then we end, and at the end of Ashrei, everybody is blessing God. So he says, this is building on each other. We start at the beginning, David HaMelech is talking about himself, I'm praising God. Then the praise extends to all pious people. And hopefully, the, our, our mission is to bring Ashrei to the world, that everybody, and we know, is always an expression, like, or like Adam. It's that's not a or ba'e olam. You have different expressions. They always mean humanity, not 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 Jews. We have expressions. B'nai Israel are Jews. Um, Adam ki akri mikam korban. When a man, uh, not a man, a a person, Adam brings a korban. That means even a non-Jew. And we know non-Jews were allowed to bring korban to the Beit Hamikdash. It's such you know in 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 Saudi Arabia, if you're not Muslim, you can't go to Mecca and Medina, right? And we ki beiti beiti la yikarei lacholamim. It's such a you know, in, in today's terms, you call it an open, tolerant, pluralistic, I don't know, whatever word you want to use. Judaism believes all, everybody comes together to pray. And they don't have to all be Jewish. We we know, we don't believe in that. It's okay, Shema Mitzvah is good enough, but recognizing God. So we we move from our from da, David HaMelech blessing to the Hasidim blessing to Kobasar blessing. That's just one sort of over arching theme of Ashri. But then he divides it into four units. So the first unit is Gedula, God is great. Gadol Hashem Umulam Yod V'Ligdula Toin Cheker. Twice in the same verse. I didn't highlight that one in blue. Okay, sorry. Gadol Hashem, God is great. Um, and um, and then we use the other expressions for great. Gura, His strength. Niflotecha, right? Um, and then we say, and we end this unit, at first unit ends, and I will say over, I will um, let people know how great you are. It's not enough to keep it inside, right? Judaism is a religion that has a mission to the world, right? So we've uh, 2,000 years of exile and, and ghettos and persecution. I have left many, many Jews, especially in the Orthodox world, to um, play down our mission to the world, right? You can say that's a major difference between reform and uh, Orthodox. Reform played up, uh, that they played it up so much that they played down the, the, the mitzvot. They they focused almost exclusively tikkun olam and uh, mission. But, and, and unfortunately, a little because of that, the Orthodox react, well, that's a reform thing to do, you know? Social justice, that's for the reform. Orthodox, we don't do social justice. That's a total distortion of the Torah. Of course we do social justice. And then we are concerned. So that the first um, theme is Gidula. Then the next theme is Tova. Zecharav Tuv Chayabiyu. God is, God is great. And if God is great, then God has to be good. Zecharav, greatness and goodness go together. Zecharav Tuv Chayabiyu. 
Tov Hashem Lakov Racham Avakom Asav, and that's the end of the unit. And therefore, we have our bracha sort of again, like the this. Uh, so the first unit is Gedula, and the second unit is Tova. And uh, like I say, Gedula, um, greatness and and um, goodness go together. The greatness of God is that He's good. Uh, the greatness that he created the world and he's all powerful, who cares? Greatness of good is that he's God. Or as uh, he put it, we, these are the ideas of imminence and transcendence. You know, the, uh, the the Hasidic world was heavily criticized because, you know, is God transcendent? God is above man. Or is God imminent? Is God, you know, God can be found even in the washroom. You know, God can be found everywhere. He's in the, he's in how we eat, right? The, when we eat food, that, that's an expression of our devotion to God. Or is God, you know, up in the heavens? So the, the Hasidic movement took sort of a transcendent God and made him very imminent. And that was one of the heavy criticisms. Of course, the answer, of course, God is, he's not, he's both. It's a, he's both transcendent, even like, like, like it's a little contradictory, but that's okay. We have to love God and fear God. That's also contradictory. That's a, we have a, in all our relationship with hum, humans too, and especially with God. God is our father and our, our king. That's also contradictory. Avinu Malkeinu. So God is great. He's above man. We cannot explain him. He's so wow. You know, and uh, and on the other hand, he's very, as we'll get to later on, Karab Hashem Lekol even more. Now, this pas this idea, goodness and greatness, or greatness and goodness, is this week's parsha, of course. Where in this week's parsha? So, tell me. I don't know if this is going to work, or do I have to stop and share again? Let me know. Did, did your screen just just change or not? Yeah, it did. Yeah. It's perfect. Okay, Dvarim ten. This week's Parsha, Parsha da Shavua, by coincidence. There are no coincidences, right? Okay, so Moshe Rabbeinu was talking to the Jewish people, right? Ata Yisrael Shema Shem Shuvalmi Mach, very famous verse. Uh, Shoshana Shachter mentioned that last week, in, I think, in her Parsha Yakim Lira. That's all you have to do is fear God. No big deal, right? So, what do you mean, no big deal? Uh, just fear God. So, we don't have time now to get into that. Um, and then you say, uh, God loved us. God created a special covenant with us. He chose their uh, their seed. God has to, we do have a special relationship. Yes, there's, a, there's also another contradiction. There's a universal aspect of God and there's a particular aspect. Aleinu, uh, the first half is the particular and then we go to universal. We have to focus on ourselves and then we grow and then we go out. So yeah, but there are a little, in, these ideas are always in tension and there's no one model how to do it, you know, and certain people have certain inclinations in one direction of the model and some have in the other direction, but both are true, fine. And then it says, Ki Hashem alo, uh, Hashem your Lord, your God, or however they pronounce it, Hu Elohe Elohim, he's the Lord of the Lords. The master of the masters. Ha'el, ha'gadol, ha'gibor, v'anarad. This is what I mentioned earlier. This is why, this is the Shmon Esri. Where does the Shmon Esri get the right to say ha'el, ha'gadol, ha'gibor, v'anarad? It's right here. Asher lo yisa panim v'lo yikach v'ashokhet. You'll see my Dvar Torah that uh, went out, I think, during the Shir is about this. Um, and then, osem mishpat yatvam v'amana v'ohei p'yar. What is the greatness of God? God is Ha'el, Hagadol, Hagibor. He's awesome. He's powerful. He's all great. It's a famous, famous statement, but like we always have to point out the most uh, basic and famous ideas. Osem Mishpat Yatom, that God does, you know, justice with the orphan and the Almana, the widow, and he loves the stranger. And Ger always has, there's a huge, I mean, not always, so when it says, Ki gerim etim you were gerim in Egypt, it doesn't mean we were converts, although maybe it does by Matan Torah, we converted, I don't know. Um, but that means, Ger means uh, both the stranger and a convert, but that means someone who's an outsider coming in, Voev Ger, God loves the stranger. And that's what the Gemara says, based on this, wherever you find the God's greatness, there you find his humbleness, his humility. And then the Torah says, Vaftem at the Ger. No, if God loves the Ger, uh, it's, it's, it's so obvious, right? Everything about God is about man, right? We don't understand God. So everything the Torah tells us, if God is merciful, we have to be merciful. So if God loves the ger, so the Torah says, okay, you too, you should love uh, the ger. You should love the stranger. You are strangers. You gave me the marriage of Trump. It's interesting. Um, what, why, I, why do I have to love the stranger? See, I just said not what the verse said. I said we have to love the stranger because God loves the stranger. Boy, Gare, that's true. But the verse itself says I have to love the stranger because I know what it's like. It's a much more practical. It's a less, less, uh, you know, uh, less. I don't know. Ideal. I don't know what the word is, but it's more. You know, you you know what it's like. To lofty. Slave. Less sorry? lofty. 
less, less lofty. lofty. Thank, you. Thank you. A less lofty reason. I don't think it, it, it contradicts, but I, I actually don't think the word key in this verse means because. What does the word key mean in, in this verse? I don't think it means for you or strangers as they cry. I don't think that's what it means. You know how the Talmud tells us the word key has at least four meanings. If, when, despite, uh, right? Ella, the ha, right? Key, key, akum, when, right? And obviously, when, key, say, if you find a lost object, the word key doesn't mean because. It sometimes means because, but it usually doesn't. The word key means despite. I think this verse means key means despite. It, it can also mean because. Yeah, that's how the, it's normally translated. But I think it's much more beautiful if you translate the word as key. Why should we love the stranger? We should love the stranger despite the fact that we were strangers. Because what often happens, people who are poor and become very wealthy, two things can happen. What can happen? They can forget. They can be very sensitive because they know what it's like to be poor. Or the poor, they want nothing to do with their previous life. You see that in Bali Chuba very often. They're like embarrassed by their past. It's very sad, I think. So, um, um, right. So, I, despite the fact that you suffer, don't make others suffer, right? I, and now, you know, there's a tremendous healthcare crisis I, in Ontario. I'm sure everywhere in the world, there's not enough staff, and because there's not enough staff, nurses are quitting in droves, and because they quit in droves, it's even harder and harder. The more people, it's a vicious circle, and it's a real emergency rooms are closing every day here. They close. They just don't have. They don't have staff to stop an emergency room. It's like unbelievable. But um, it's really, you know, that's been the top news here for the last while. The government and so the little thing yesterday, whatever. Um, so um, what happens? A doctor has to work for 36 hours. That's the way it used to be now. I think they're a little bit nicer, only 24. Is the Israeli residents maybe going on strike because they have to work 26-hour shifts and the government promised they'll go down to 18 and then they didn't keep their promise. So the residents said they're going to go on strike. I'm not following exactly what's going on there, but it's inhumane to work for 26 hours. Kalva Homer for 36 hours straight. So what I know, what do doctors say who are 50 years old when the resident can Planes. I would have to work 36 hours or 24 hours. I work for 20. I work for 36 hours when I was a resident. What are you complaining about? So that's exactly what the verse means. Despite the fact that you you had to go through it, don't say oh, if I went through it, you can go through it too. Oh, have to met the gear, love the gear. Key gay rim. Yeah, it's not so terrible. We were also gay rim, and we get over it. We did it. We're fine. No, the Torah said, don't don't say that. That's terrible that you were gay rim. That was wrong what the Egyptians did to you. Don't say. But I turned out okay. Don't do that to others. So I think he oh. doesn't mean that. Anyway, but that that's you have in the Torah itself. I think David Amelech is picking up on this in the Torah itself, this idea of greatness, the the um, um, transcendence of God, El Hagadol Hagibor, awesome, powerful, and he helps the stranger and the poor. That's the um that's so those are the first two parts of Ashray. Let's go back here, back to Ashray. Okay. Ashray. Okay. Then the okay, so they got to, so we're now like halfway through, kind of, Yivarchucha, and then we start on Malchut. Kavod Malchut Chayamiru, God is the king. So God is now the king. So the, the we go back to sort of again a God, sort of a more more distant God, so to speak. God is the Melech. Um, I'm not going to get into it this week, maybe next week, but there are some people who claim the missing nun in Ashrei, right? I mean, we'll spend a few minutes, please, God, next week discussing that. Uh, what, uh, it's not simple at all, but some point out a very interesting approach. Um, um, no, yeah, no, it doesn't work. Um, I thought, so I must have seen it wrong because notice how Mem, Lamed, and, and Kaf here spell, spell, you know, you know, Melech. Oh, yes. Yeah, no, it spells the Mam, the Lamed, and the Kaf. No, it's, but I, so I have to look that up again. I said, no, I shouldn't have talked about it at all because the Nun would come after the, the, the Mam. But anyways, the Mam, the Lamed, and the Kaf spell, it's a backwards acrostic or whatever. You know, we alf, yes. actually it's alphabetical, but we know we're very into Atbash. We have the Kanta Shabbat. We, we, we also do the alphabet backwards, right? So doing it backwards, Mam, Lamed, Kaf spells... Melech, God is king. Anyways, that's the third theme. And again, like in the first two themes, if God is the king, knew the king, the king doesn't worry about day-to-day -day problems. That's, uh, that's not his job. The king sits on the throne all day. 
He has, uh, you know, he's very fancy. He's beyond the people. You can't reach the king. Can't uh, see. So no. So God is a very different king. And then the fourth thing. So Hashem Anochim. What's the? What does it mean to be a king? The fourth unit is God helping people. So Hashem Anochim. He he uh, he lifts up all those who are falling. Um, he gives us our food in this time. And of course, the most important verse, God opens up his hand and feeds everybody. And he's close to everybody. So the, these are how he explains. I mean, I, it's pretty simple, but I don't know how many of you, uh, myself included, I really sort of analyze it like this. And you see how the language, you know, the Yibarchucha divides it, but also, you know, we open and close. Gedula, Gedula, to, Tova. And by the way, in, okay, Tova, Malchut, and helping. So Mecha Shem Lechol and Aflim, and Shomer Shem Ekol So there you don't have the exact same word, but you have the same idea. And of course, want to point out, Chanum Brachum Hashem Erech Apayim Uvdal Chesed. What does this verse remind you of? Yud Gimel Midot. There you go. Very good, Debbie. Thank you. The Yud Gimel Midot. Hashem Hashem Arachum V'chanun Erech Apayim V'rav Chesed V'yemeth. Right. So here we have the the Yud Gimel Midot, and of course, what are the Yud Gimel Midot? Those are the goodness of man, the 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 goodness of God, and the obligation for man to copy the Yud Gimel Midot. And of course, when when were the Yud Gimel Midot um um given to man, so to speak, or when did God reveal himself? That's after the sin of the golden calf, after the Chedekel. In other words, it's also a very recurring theme in, in the in Torah. God is good even when we sin, right? Next week's Parsha, Bani Matam Hashem Elokeichem, the introduction, I believe, in chapter 14, You are the children of God, when somebody dies, don't rip your body, right? That's part of life. You're not allowed to mutilate yourself. You rip your clothes, but you can't rip your body. So, but uh, so what's the connection? But Nimatam, you're the children of God. So that's why the Gemara has a drasha. Loti Godadu doesn't mean just to, to, to rip your, your, your skin. It means Lotasu Agudot Agudot. Don't divide into factions. You're not allowed to have two. This is a, a big problem we have today. <laughs> but there's a, a Torah prohibition to divide into factionalization, denomination. That's a prohibited. Lotasu Agudot Agudot. But anyway, what, what, why am I quoting this? Panima Temsha, there's a Machloka, Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Huda. When are we the children of God? Are we the children of God always? or only if we don't sin. That's a very important argument. I, I forget who says what, but we Puskin, whatever that means, I don't know how you say we can rule on such a idea, but we, the accepting view in Judaism is we're God's children even when we sin. Ezu Sefer Kritut, God cannot fully divorce us, right? The Churban, Tisha B'av, that was a little divorce, but God can't completely, he can't cut off the relationship. But Nimata, he can do Hester Panim, he can hide his face anyway but that's um so um but that's you see so he so um professor kimmelman divides um the ashray into these four sort of themes the greatness of god leading to the goodness of god um and the kingship of god uh, which of course parallels the greatness of god leading to god's being so mech, helping of course which is the goodness of god so it's really two themes it's really uh uh, one A, one B, and then the two A, two B, and the one, one and two are are connected. One A, one B, um, again. Okay. Um, so, and then you have, of course, and that's why there you have the Yud Gimel Mido. You have uh, all kinds of ideas. Okay. So let's um, let's let's go through what I want to do now a little bit. I we won't do every single word, but I uh, and now we will only spend um, a few minutes. We'll just get started. That uh, to go through actually some of the ideas itself in Asher. All this is a very nice overview. And we, of course, we pointed out some of the uh, themes and the ideas, but let's add a few more um, ideas. Okay, we'll start. Tila le David. As I mentioned, the only place Tilim is said, Tihila. I will um, I will raise you. Rome, Rum. Uh, here, I'm, I'm using the RCA sitter now. By the way, does anybody have the RCA sitter? That's like, uh, as Mark Shapiro said, it, it's. It, it missed the boat. The, does anybody have the, the sitter, the RCA sitter? Anybody have this? That's what I expected, right. So the RCA sitter came out not long ago, but no one's going to buy it because 
those shuls that went to Corin, you know, turning your shul over is say there's like a, 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 a $50,000 project. Like it's a lot of money. And shuls don't have to, the art school sitter is good enough. Why don't you need Koran for? Going to spend $50,000. So a lot of people, a lot of shuls switch to Koran because uh, we're modern Orthodox. Art school is not so modern. We want the Tefillah Lishlama Medina that art school kept up, right? Art school doesn't have, maybe art school was so bothered by that problem in the Pasu. They didn't put in Tefillah Lishlama Medina, right? Everybody's upset because of Israel. No, maybe they didn't put it in because they didn't like that. Okay, that's a bad joke. I don't know about that. Anyways, so some people switch to Koran. No, the RCA has been working on, on a sitter for a long long time since before Corin, but they only finally published the Rabbinical Council of America. It's very good. It's a combination of, of scholarship. It's it's a little bit more academic. It's very nice. Got 17 articles in in, in the back, different uh, rabbis of different people writing on T Law. It's, it's it, whatever. And it's nicely put together, but uh, no one's going to use it. Nobody buys it. So uh whatever. That's uh because uh, they missed the boat. What what can you say? Um, so they trans. I don't know how the. I don't have my. Oh, here, let me look at Corin. How does Corin translate over Mimcha? Got my Corin here. Um, this is actually not the the regular Corin. This is the Rav's Corin that also nobody has. Rav Sullivan, the the Corin with the interpretations of Rabbi Soloveitchik. Okay, that's not the stat. Not not the Jonathan Sachs Corin. Arimcha, yeah, exalt. I will exalt you. Okay, I will raise you. Arimcha elamelech, barvachashimcha lolamved, and I will bless you. What's lo olam ba'ed mean? Yeah, what, what does Olam Va'ed mean? I will bless you, La Olam Va'ed. Eternally. Yeah, so do we live eternally? So that, I, I know, okay, this is like a smaller point. I just want to point it out. Just we, we should, you know, pause and think for half a minute. Um, so some say, I will bless God for every new. So that's uh, okay. Then we're going to get Dor Lador Yishabak Masacha. You're right. I can't bless God eternally, but through my children. That's really the whole idea. I mean, that's one of the ideas of having children, right, is uh, one generation does X, well, I don't know if we'll get there uh, this week, probably next week, the beautiful understanding of Malbim, of door to door, of the idea of one generation growing and, and building on the next one. So some say it means forever, and uh, obviously it means I can't do it myself. That's okay. Have children and conquer the world. You, you're not going to conquer the world. Your children aren't going to, your children are going to make a little contribution to conquering the world. But uh, throughout the many generations, we conquer the world. So th that's the simple thing. I mean, forever, just your part is you live on. Be, you leave a good legacy or you don't have children. You support Torah, do other things, right? That's Yad Vashem. That's the Hav Torah we read always on the fast days, right? Al Yomar Hasaris, the person who can't have children shouldn't say, I'm a nobody. He should, uh, I'm going to give you something greater. Uh, I'll give you something greater than children. Uh, Yad Vashem, I'll give you my name and, and my uh, my Yad and Meshem, right? You know, the, those verses from the Torah. That's where Yad Vashem got its name from, obviously. And uh, people who couldn't have, unfortunately, you know, killed before their, their time. Um, so, um, but there, but you support Torah, you do, uh, you leave a legacy and all kinds of things. You, your, your, your students are your children, etc. So that's uh, uh, for forever, blessed forever. Um, now, what the Malbim, I say, I, I'm using, you'll see over the next couple of weeks, please God, I'll use the Malbim a lot. The Malbim, uh, who, who's the Malbim? I'll just introduce him and maybe say one idea and then we'll move on. Who is the Malbim? Don't all answer at once. Okay. Um, I'm sure most people have heard of the Malbim, but like a lot of things, you heard of them, but you don't know who they are. Um, so the Malbim, Mayor, Le, Mayor Leibush Ben Yechiel Michel. It's like a mayor, ma'am, Leibush. I don't know, must say a Yiddish. He was a rab mainly in Romania, I believe. So he fought the reform movement. What's interesting, you might be interested to know, you might not be interested to know, that he was, uh, per, they uh, approached him to become the chief rabbi of New York City. You know, New York City had a chief rabbi once. A uh, disaster ship of disasters. We talked about it once. And that's why America, chief rabbis in America are an oxymoron. America is too uh, individualistic. We don't go for chief rabbis. That's the British model. You know, people are compliant. Mm -hmm. The, the, the chief rabbi has to sign off every rabbi in every shul, right? In America, it's Isha Yashar Bein Yasa. The freedom of America ethos does not, I, I mean this all in all seriousness, the ethos of America does not allow for um, a chief rabbi. So they tried it once in 1882, they brought over Rav Yaakov Yosef, RJJ, that's not the RJJ school. And it was mamish a disaster. It was, uh, so I, I don't know if people know the whole story. He, his funeral was a disaster. 1902, he died. He died a poor man in Proverbs. They threw him out. They, nobody listened 
wasn't him. It was a, a disaster. Anyway, so um, when they when they decided the group of people on the Lower East Side to hire, um, there we need a chief rabbi in New York. So uh, as Rabbi Brakefet told me once, somebody else called himself the, the, the chief rabbi of New York. So they asked him, "Who made you the chief rabbi?" So he said, "The paint signer, the painter, made me the chief rabbi." I went to the painter and I asked him to put a sign, chief rabbi, you put it in your office, chief rabbi, you know, investment advice, right? There's these, these depressions that are not regulated. You can call yourself what you want. Anyways, the, I just pointed out as an aside, the Malbim was approached to be the chief rabbi of New York. I think he died. He died in 1879 before it could uh, take uh, in effect. Anyways, the Malbim is famous for, I mean, he's famous for his commentary on Tanakh and what he's, <coughs> especially famous for is that his analysis of words that sound the same. What's the difference between Sasson and Simcha and Gila and Rina and, uh, and Bracha and Tila? Like he, he, he very much focuses that where the words that we assume are, are synonymous have different meanings. Charon and up, God's charon up. There's charon and up are not the same thing. One's in the exter one's external anger, one's internal anger, all kinds of things. So the Malbim does a lot of that really very beautifully and uh and he does he picks up on the uh, barbanel a little bit he doesn't ask him many questions he learned from the barbanel he asks too many questions and you, nobody will learn you right the barbanel nobody nobody studies the barbanel work because he asks 85 questions it takes you, you 10 pages to read this question before you get to his answers but uh the malby may ask always three three four questions if you look in his paper sure i'll pull it out here here, this is the Malbim on Shmot, right? The Malbim, you look it up. Here has um, the, the Mechilka, uh, HaTorah Bamitzvah, his commentary, right? In Shmot, they printed with the Malbim. But, um, oh, anyways, this is, okay, you can see later. So um, he often explains the difference between various words. So I, I just, we'll, we'll, we'll get into him, please, God, in the next, next couple of weeks. Um, so he said, So he says like this, that um, we can't understand the, Arim Chayim is talking about the transcendence of God. God is, I, God is elevated. He's above everything. Um, but his name, so I can't understand God. I, can, I can't have really a, a relationship with that type of a, a, a God, or the essence of God is totally incomprehensible. But Shimcha, his name can be blessed. What's his name? His names are his actions. What God does, what's a Kiddush Hashem? The way we act brings glory to God's name. So the only thing we can praise or we, really is God's name. We can elevate God. Aramimcha Eloimela. He's above us. We can't understand him. But we can bless God's name. Because we can act in a way that brings glory to God's name. Okay, I see it's it's getting late. So let's just do a quick uh, a, a quick review. Well, we discussed the problem in the prayer for the government of Israel. How, uh, not for the government of Israel, for the foreign government, that they took this Pasuk and Dilem and divided it into two. Very strange. And then, uh, which, but it's... Is something we do on occasion because Tilala David, Tili may get its name from Tilala David. It's the only place where you have um, Tilala David mentioned. We mentioned it may have been said, Ashrei Ashrei Vitecha may have been said by the people who came up to the Beit HaMikdash. They were blessed that they were so fortunate to come. And then we spent a few minutes discussing sort of the rabbinic hype. Perhaps it's just hyperbola, uh, not just, but it's uh, that whoever says Ashrei three times a day gets to Olam Haba. So we said that by a few other things. If you somek ulal atvila, you get to Olam Haba. If you, if you learn a halacha every day, you get to Olam Haba. You want to get to Olam Haba? Then learn the halacha to bring peace to the world. It's not a nice, uh, fancy, uh, nice drush of the rabbi. The rabbi bring peace. It's a halacha imperative that we bring peace to the world. We said the same idea you have by many mitzvot that God says um, that our, our, our rabbi said they're equal to all other mitzvot. We can't have 10 mitzvot, tzitzis and Shabbos and the Torah and living in Israel. You can't have so many mitzvot that are all equal to all the other mitzvot. That doesn't work. But obviously the rabbis of that generation or that rab particular rabbi felt that mitzvah needed to be stressed. For whatever reason, it needed to be stressed. Okay. And then, uh, then we discussed... Um, Ashrei itself, we discussed um, Ruben Kilman's breaking of Ashrei into, first of all, it's it's a series, it's, it's, it's blessing God. I bless God, the pious bless God, then everybody blesses God. And then we divide it into its four component parts of greatness and goodness, kingship and helping. And of course, they go together. If God is great, 
greatness is defined by 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 goodness, and that's the pasuk in this week's parsha. El agadol agibor. God is gibor and ara awesome, but He helps the widow and the poor. And God is malchut chol malchut kol alamim, and therefore He is somech lechol nanoklim, and therefore He helps all. So you have the imminence of God and the transcendence of God coming all together, and then we just start and we'll pick up on the um, on the um, you know the actual some of the ideas within Ashri itself, some of the verses, how they're structured and what they may teach. And please, God, next week we'll try to discuss a little bit why the nun is missing in uh, Ashray. Okay, I want to thank everybody. I see, um, okay, let me quickly go through the questions. The beginning of Pirkei, give, yeah, everybody gets Olam Haba either. That's again, the, the rabbis um, taking things out of context. Um, why? The, in other words, that's the first half of the mission. The next half is the Elush Elohim Chelech Lolam Haba. So there's the mission is that everybody has a share in the world to come, and here are the people who don't have a share in the world to come. <laughs> and not be chorus, right? Or, uh, or don't have a share in the world to come. The Mishnah in Pirkei Avot uh, only quotes the nice thing. They don't want to quote the bad thing. They want to give us a little bit of chizuk. Whether <clears throat> it's a good question, actually. Did the rabbis know that people would know that? No, what what did the rabbi? It's not Pirkei Avot. Kol Yisrael Yishlam Chol Chol Ba is a Mishnah in Sanhedrin, and then it got put to the beginning of Pirkei Avot. So is that, um, did the, the, whoever did that, did they know? I mean, obviously they knew. They weren't quoting the whole thing in, in context, but we we do a lot of that. The Yud Gimel Midot, Hashem Hashem Rachem Mechanu Nerech Abayim Reches of Yemed, No Tzarech Etzel Alpim, No Seyav HaMapesha Vechata Benake. That's not what it says. Yes. What does it say? Okay, lo Okay, lo Yenake. <laughs> Right, uh, uh, you have a lot of that. So that we, it's a whole other, other sheer. Remind me, please, God. I'm happy to talk about that a little bit. It's also total miscontext. But now the rabbis knew this. So we have to understand what are the rabbis doing here. Uh, that's very, very important. God forbid you shouldn't say, "Oh, the rabbis misunderstood." No, the rabbis knew exactly what they were doing. Which is why are they doing it? And, and why is the Torah? A, a lot of it is the Torah wants to give multiple messages. But um, but here. Here it's different. Here the rabbis are quoting half. They probably wanted, I am uh, could be, they thought the average person might not know that. I don't know. I and mean, even if we do know that, it feels much more positive to just say the good thing. So it's true. I mean, it's a potential for Olam Haba, but it doesn't mean everybody gets there automatically. I don't know what this stuff means, and I don't like to focus on it. We have to worry about Olam Hazel. That's this world. Don't worry, but Olam Haba will take care of itself. Some addition to the Yard Stroll Center do have Tvila. No, that's just the, uh, there is no, no. The RCA printed a, uh, we'll have to turn off our tape for this, but uh, the RCA, of course, printed the original sitter, I think, in the mid 80s. And of course, they left it out and that created a big, you know, a big stink. People were very upset at them. But OK, their constituency, is the, whatever, in the 80s, for sure, maybe today's a little bit different. So then they reached an agreement with the RCA and they printed a special art scroll RCA sitter. And that one has an introduction by Saul Berman, not uh, Nassim Sherman, a very modern orthodox where he quotes from Rabbi Salve. It's a very different introduction. And they added into Lala Shalom. And then it's a different color. So yeah, so whether you say that's really nice of the RCA or you can say they have no no principles and for money they'll sell out, I'll leave that for you to decide. Or if they really believe Lala Shalom is wrong, well, when somebody offers you money, I, I don't know. I, I I'm not judging, but they did print an art scroll, um, a, a more modern RCA sitter. Then what happened oh. is that they the RCA wanted to print a new sitter, and they had an agreement with art scroll that there had to be in. I don't know the details, and it's not. A, I don't even want to know the details. Whatever happened, oh. so it, it, and that that's one of the reasons it took the RCA so long to print another sitter. They had some agreement with. The, I don't know what it was. So eventually, they printed it through Corin. Um, but uh, whatever. So the RCA sitter, listen, uh, the RCA has done amazing work. They've sold over a million of uh, the RCA, the RCA also, but Art Scroll has has changed the, the Jewish world. I believe we're still waiting for our first PhD to write on the Art Scroll phenomena. Art Scroll has totally revolutionized the world and uh, much and uh, in, in many, many, many positive ways. I, believe me, I got issues with Art Scroll, but, but like uh, they've done many amazing things. And Daf Yomi is Daf Yomi because of Art Scroll. 
And Dafyomi, I believe, is bigger in America than it is in Israel. And it's Arts Girl. Arts Girl revolutionized Jewish learning. Yes, they have a certain hashkafa, and uh, even though it's not, I mean, we agree on the 90% of the stuff. 10%, we don't agree. I don't like their view on uh, whatever. That's, that doesn't matter. Um, um, but uh, so everybody's entitled to do their hashkafa. So the RCA doesn't agree either. That's why they wanted their own sitter. We don't, we don't, we want it to be more women inclusive. We want it to be more about Israel inclusive. We want it to be more of this, you know, all kinds of things. But um, yeah, so what Art Scroll did, so that, that's just interesting. So there is an Art Scroll, RCAC, which I don't think anybody uses anymore because once Corin came out, that got uh, pushed aside. And then when they reprinted it, they took out Saul Berman. To, uh, obviously, Art Scroll is not going to have Saul Berman from st st Stern College, you know, and uh, Rabbi of Lincoln Square prior, you know, I would say left of center, quote unquote, you know, and so it's just interesting. Uh, these things are interesting. Okay, I, I said I should have stopped the tape for that one. Just don't repeat that to anybody. Okay. Um, was in there the ever word, a in the Rabbi word, of Canada? Word, I'm sorry? In the, word, in the word word ed, does the word ed, what witness have anything to do with that word? Blah, I'm blah, sorry, blah, which blah, word? Blah, 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 what do you mean? I mean, does that have to do with the Olam word, Haba? Yeah, the word witness is in there, Ed. Oh, A, Olam Ed. Oh, yeah. I don't think Ed. so, but let me, I have to look at that. Oh, I, it's the Olam Haba Ed. It means forever. Yeah. You mean, you want to say it means also witness. That's very interesting. I don't know. It could be. I, I never thought of that, but that makes a lot of sense. Maybe I'll, I'll I'll look into it. I'll try to look into it. I would think it comes from the word odd. Odd. Like right. Odd. That's is what I think. But it. <laughs> but you know, Hebrew has no nikudot, so maybe odd and a can go together. Yeah, it's an interesting idea. It could be. Could be. Uh, it could be. That's not the original meaning, but the fact that it could be interpreted that way. I had. Uh, thank you. <laughs> was there ever uh, chief government chair of Canada? No, but there was in Montreal. Montreal. I think Adayoma has achieved Rabbi Hirschsprung for many years was the chief rabbi in Montreal. I forget who it is now, um, but uh, Canada is more European, especially Montreal is a French, you know, or part of the yes. French consulate, whatever, you know, so it's, it's a more European attitude. Uh, Toronto, to the best of my knowledge, Toba, correct me if I'm wrong, there was never a chief rabbi in Toronto. No, no, no one's ever been chief. No one's ever taken the title of chief rabbi of Toronto, as far as I know. And uh, they, nor of Canada. I, yeah, you know, we're part of the Commonwealth. So the queen is our queen. Uh, so whether the chief rabbi of England is our chief rabbi, I don't know. I, I don't think people really, I mean, Rabbi Mervis is nice. He's been to, to Canada, but I, I don't think, I don't think anybody considers him the chief rabbi of Canada. We don't need a pope. Yeah, that's uh, okay, right? Uh, yeah, okay. The the chief rabbi in Israel was in in Toronto last week. I went to hear him. He had a question answer period uh, before Mincha last week. But that's uh, yeah, that's uh, for an, for another time. What the role is is should there be um, a chief rabbi? Yeah, that's very interesting. Rabbi Avram Rice. Oh, yeah, Avram Rice. I think was the one of the first rabbis ever to come to America. Right, in the 1860s in Baltimore. I don't think he was appointed the chief rabbi, but correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know. That's I believe he was the first rabbi, and then Isaac Lesser came. I think I don't know if Isaac Lesser right 1850. I don't remember the exact date there, but you have to realize that there were Jews in America for 200 years without a single rabbi here. <laughs> To draw your own conclusions, what that means. But uh, American Jews arrived, Jews write in Sarna's book, they, they, they date the first Jew arriving here in 1654. And uh, um, so uh, that's why he wrote the book. It's a fantastic book, American Judaism. Here, let me just pull it out. Again. Uh, yeah, here it is. Okay, I don't see it. I thought I knew it, but. All right, 350 years. 350 years uh, of, of Jews in America, but they had for, for 200 years, you had no, no rabbis in America, which is kind of interesting. I, and uh, we mentioned before, the reason you got so many rabbis in 1924, when America closed the doors to Im immigration, there was an exception for rabbis. That's where Salavetia got in, that's where Varn Cutler got in, that's, uh, like, that's where they're all saved from the, the Holocaust. But uh, America closed its gates pretty much in 1924, but members of the clergy could still immigrate. And that's, that's why you have a lot of ra rabbis immigrating to America in the 20s and the 30s when nobody else could get in. But that's a whole other story. Okay, um, thank you very much. Uh, 
uh, please God. Okay, we'll continue on Sunday uh, with Rabbi Leaptag. I, I don't know if we'll go out today or, or something. Everything technology takes longer than you think. But uh, like I mentioned last night, we have, please God, 11 series that are we'll beginning next Monday for Elulzman, uh, right, for our Elul series. Uh, this series will continue. I was debating, should I switch to the Machsor? But I don't think so, because I think we have two other classes on on, on the on the Machsor. So we can keep on the sitter. And guess what? We say Ashrei on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur too. So that can also be part of the uh, Yom Ramim Noraim davening. Um, and then, so we have a bunch here. So look, we'll, we'll send in the next little while. Um, mm. We'll send out all the schedules and stuff. Okay. Um, everybody I have, have a good Shabbos. Have a wonderful Shabbos. Good Shabbos. Good Shabbos. Good Shabbos. Thank, good Shabbos. thank you very much. Great Shabbos. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Good Enjoy. Shabbos. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you. Good Shabbos. Shabbos. Um, thanks. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you. Thank you. Rabbi? Yeah. Mm -hmm. all right. You got me just as it's about to close the meeting. God, perfect timing. Yes. I to read that article, which rabbi that, that you're recommending about Ashray? That... Ruben Kimmelman. Oh. Ruben Kimmelman. If you type in Ruben Kimmelman and Ashray, it should come up. I mean, um, it's online, that article. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I actually saw it on Jewish Learn. What's that website? They I get their email every morning. My yeah. Jewish, Jewish Learning. Learning. My, my Jewish Learning. Jewish Learning. My 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 Jewish learning. Uh, that's where I saw the article printed. But it's uh, you know, it's uh, it's not a long article. It's it's a uh, you know five minute read. What I type in the Kimmelman? What do Kimmelman? K I M E L M A N E E M L M E N something like that. Let me look it up myself. Hold on. Let me. Uh, I can uh, find uh, it. Yes. Well, uh, the. The idea that we were talking about the sure. that uh, a rich man who gets rich forgot that he was poor. Do you know why that comes up explicitly in the government? What about helping the poor? No, but when somebody gets rich, right. Sometimes they help the poor. Sometimes, yeah, but you know, they, some some people are more yeah, sensitive. They but understand, but some people that, want to forget it. Yeah, they, I don't want to know. I was once poor. You don't want to come to explicitly in the davening. That, yeah, I I mean I don't know where it's in davening, but no, no, we we say the hell I got all like poor, but but this, the, that's was, why we eat matzah on Pesach. I'll show you. Not, that's exactly I'll, we don't I'll, want to. I'll show you, I'll show you where it comes up. It, ah, you want to show me where? Yeah. Yeah. And, and as a matter of fact, it comes up tomorrow. Not every Shabbat, but tomorrow. Okay. Okay. In 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 the benching of Rashkoda. Now benching of Rashkoda, yeah. What do we okay. say? Okay. In the he was told that he claimed the beginning. Okay, I, it's a beautiful idea. Okay, it's a year to mind twice. So the question is, why did it say year to mind twice? Okay, yeah. What's between it? Oh, Shiver Kabul. So when you become an Osha, you got to say your Jemima again because uh -huh. you tend to forget. Yeah. When we get too wealthy, we tend to forget. Yeah, I just posted the link, Mr. Zucker. I just posted yes. the link. Oh, no, I posted it not to everybody. I posted it. Oh, no, it is there. Yeah, yeah. My Jewish learning. I posted it there. Um, <laughs> Okay. All right, everybody, have a good Shabbos. Be well, those who are there. Okay, all the best. Bye-bye.